Okay, people, I right, was so super, super honored tonight um, and super excited because, you know, I'm, I'm so uh, blessed, right, to be friends with this lovely couple all the way from uh, Dallas, uh, Texas, right, from the USA. And uh, I, the first time I met uh, this couple was uh, eight, nine years ago when I first got to know about World Ventures and flew into the States and got to meet them and hear their story about how this company has changed their lives, right? So, um, Dwight, Fadia, it's a real honor to have you on this call. Say hi to everybody. Hey. Hi, guys. Good, Good evening. evening. Good evening. Good evening, right? So, uh, before I invite Dwight and Fadia to share their story, just a quick introduction. So, uh, Dwight was an uh, airline pilot, uh, I believe, right, uh, many years ago. And uh, his beautiful wife, Fadia, is a, a flight attendant. So they were both from the travel industry um, in their careers, right? And, you know, uh, retired now, financially free, enjoying a fantastic lifestyle uh, sit over, over, over the last, what, 13, 14 years, okay? So we really want to hear their story because they joined World Ventures and have known Wayne for over 20 years. So Dwight, Fadia, um, I'll hand over the stage to you. Please share with us your amazing story. Hey, good morning, Dennis. Thank you very much for this invitation. I just want Fadi to say good morning to everybody. Yeah. Good morning, guys. This is a little bit too early for us. We are not morning purple, but <laughs> this is perfect. We were so excited we didn't sleep. So anyway, <laughs> we're so excited to be on the call, guys, and, and excited to be talking to you guys. Yes, likewise, Dennis. Thank you very much. It's a great idea. And when you reached out to me right away, I was... I was very intrigued about the idea, the concept, and uh, you've now taken it to a whole nother level. It, gr it grew dramatically uh, from your first comment to me a day or two ago when you asked if you could be available to do a video. It's now, it looks like it's a you know, worldwide production here, you know, thanks to your initiative. And I saw what Wayne had to say about you leading the way. Of course, we've been watching you lead the way since we met you way back when. Uh, we've always been... Um, extremely uh, impressed with what you've accomplished in your part of the world in Asia. It's just been a massive, massive uh, amount of accomplishments. So uh, we're, we're very fortunate to get to spend some time with you and share a little bit of our, our story. What happened, uh, Dennis, is I happened to, uh, I was in Fort Worth, Texas, where we live. We live right between the two cities. We're about 35 miles from the corporate office in Plano, Texas, by the way. And, um, uh, 20, going on 23 years ago, 22 years ago, February, I happened to be in a car dealership and a guy showed me a product and he said, there's going to be a guy talking about this at the Holiday Inn in Fort Worth, Texas, you know, at 730. So I was about five and 530 in the afternoon. I thought, well, I'll hang around a little bit, go over there and see what this is all about. I had been in the industry of networking uh, already for a number of years by this point in time. So I kind of knew the, you know, curiosity aspect of that. So I walked in and there was somebody talking and uh, it was a very intriguing concept and idea, but I was particularly um, impressed with the individual. Very young guy, um, and I happened to be 28 years old at the time I learned later on. But I said, now I've been watching a lot of people in the industry now for a number of decades prior to that. I mean, a major, major uh, speakers and people on stage in, in our industry. And I just thought he really has something Unique. I got to meet him. So after the meeting, a lot of people around him, but I waited a few minutes until it freed up. I just walked over and I, I reached out and I said, hi, my name is Dwight Hanson. He said, my name is Wayne Nugent. And that's how I met Wayne. Ironically, he kind of lives in our neighborhood, so to speak, not so many miles from here. Arlington, Texas, I think is where he was at at the time. Ironically, shortly thereafter, I met his sister who happened to be a teller at a bank where I bank. So shortly thereafter, I wound up meeting his sister and his mother and several other relatives. And so we just kind of uh, hung around together. But I realized he was a unique individual. Little did I know that handshake literally changed my life dramatically, my wife's life, our now 28-year-old daughter's life. And frankly, countless tens of thousands of people around the world uh, because of that particular introduction. So that was very, very unique. We kind of, I hooked my wagon, if you will, to his, ironic, even though he's quite a bit younger than I am, uh, but uh, he had a few projects and he called me up and uh, we got started on a few projects together over the period of time up until 
uh, the time that, uh, and he had actually told me that he wanted to integrate network marketing, I call it, I prefer viral marketing industry with the travel industry several years or two before that. And so I knew he was working in that direction. And a few months before, in the summer of 05, he told me, I think I've found the formula. I want, I, he was looking for technology and he said, I found the technology. And sure enough, in October of 05, we got the call. And we were one of about 12 people. In fact, I'm sitting just a few feet away when I took that phone call. And uh, he actually called and said, hey, can you be on a call, on a private call that in a couple of hours from now? We said, yes, we're going to send you a private message. And uh, so we agreed. And uh, I think there were about a dozen of us on that phone call, most of which really were the ones that launched the company. That was in October of 2005, by the way. Wow, wow. So, so you guys were really at the very beginning when World Ventures was created. Well, everyone, listen carefully uh, to Dwight and Fadia's story. This is an amazing, amazing story. Yes, it's kind of interesting you mentioned that because ironically, we had been involved in some previous um, businesses and myself and some other partners had scheduled a meeting uh, up in Missouri. And when this all launched, that was already in motion. We were already going down one path with this particular model, this particular company, but connected to Wayne. And then he announced that he was going to start internet-based technology-driven travel club and enter the travel space. Patty and I are both from the travel industry as a pilot and flight, in, flight attendant. So it was uh, crystal clear that this was a, you know, a direction to go. So at any rate, we said, well, we got a little problem because we got maybe 50, 75 people that are up there wanting to go this direction. Now you're telling us we're going to go this direction and we're supposed to bring some of those with us if we can. So believe it or not, he agreed to fly up from Texas to Missouri, an hour flight or so, and come in and introduce World Ventures. It was actually the very first World Ventures meeting publicly in the world that happened in, in Branson, Missouri. He came up on stage. I was fortunately the um, MC that day, happened to introduce him. Fatty happened to take a picture of that. We have a picture of that particular situation happening. And he went through, explained, this is what we're going to do, Internet-Based Technology and Travel Club. Got on an airplane, flew home, and opened up uh, the meeting with a couple hundred people to the Zaza Hotel in downtown Dallas. Wow. So, so that was like the first ever public meeting in history for the company, right? Wow. Fadia, tell, tell us, like, you know, how, what was that feeling, you know, uh, looking back now and, and, you know, back then when the, both of you were, when World Ventures was nothing until today, you know, what, how has life changed, you know, since then? And, and why do you trust, continue to trust Wayne so much? Do you want to respond to that? Well, I mean, you know, watching Wayne and watching how young he was and entrepreneur he was. And, you know, one thing that struck me about the young man is he was definitely not motivated by money. And because one of the incidents we had with Wayne years back, we ran into him at the airport and we're sitting there talking, waiting on our flight. He's waiting on another flight. And he opened his briefcase and he had stacks of checks that he had not cashed. I'm thinking, well, what's with this guy? You know, why isn't he cashed this money? You know, he was too busy building what he's doing. And, and that was really what excited, you know, just knowing that this guy is not just about the money. You know, his heart is so big. And, and every time I've seen Wayne, I've always made sure that I would go over there and say, thank you, Wayne, for changing our life. Um, Dwight said 13 years ago, he was right here in this room. We still live in the same house. We still drive, we have nice cars. We used to drive nice cars. As a pilot and a flight attendant, as comfortable, we were comfortable with the money part. We had the money. We did not have the life. We had no life. We were gone all the time. Not only that, but we had to fly my mother from overseas to come and raise our kid because we were not even home to raise our own kid. And life has changed since World Venture came into our life. It has been 
a joyful. We go to bed when we want to go to bed. We get up. We go. To, we travel where we want to go, and and it's just so much peaceful. And we spend more time with our daughter as much as she let us do, of course. <laughs> um, so anyway, yes, life has changed for us, and we are very very thankful to World Venture, thankful to Wayne. Yeah, it's kind of funny because you asked, you said something about, you know, knowing and trusting Wayne. A lot of people asked me when we first got started, you know, it looked like a grand idea. It's going to expand dramatically around the United States. Maybe someday it'll even go international, if you could imagine that. And they said, well, what's going to, what's going to keep this guy, referring to Wayne, to making a bunch of money and run off to Venezuela? I said, why in the world would he want to go to Venezuela? He just got back from Venezuela. He'd already been traveling a great deal. He had this love for exactly. travel. I said, the last thing in the world he needs to do is go somewhere. He's already been there anyway. So there's no interest whatsoever. And what Fadia said is absolutely true. I've never seen, I've never known anybody personally that's made as much money as he has and was so uh, casual about it. It's just amazing. I watched him make serious money three separate times in the years prior to him starting World Ventures. And the one thing I knew when he started World Ventures, the one component it was going to have is extremely lucrative compensation plan because he was so used to living really, really well and living large financially, even though he, quite frankly, you would never know it on one level like Betty just said. So that was one of the unique characteristics that I identified, uh, you know, Wayne with. Wow. Um, um, I mean, you, you were there when we didn't even have Mark Asetta, am I right? I mean, Mark Asetta wasn't even part of the company when you guys uh, started with Wayne. So can you share with us, you know, what difference did it make when Wayne got Mark Asetta to join World Ventures and, you know, started all these events, uh, training system all over the world? Can, can you share with us, you know, what, uh, what, what's the big difference between then and now? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting question. I'll tell you why. Because uh, I've been in the industry about 40 years right now, and I've been having some friends and partners uh, that have been around the industry 30, 35, 25 years and so on. And uh, like Matt, I happen to get, you know, cut my teeth in the Amway business, quite frankly, watched a lot of people grow through that system, watched, we had hundreds and hundreds of training, major players and speakers and so on and so forth around the world. And so when the idea came up that we were going to bring in somebody from the outside, the group that was already here in World Ventures really was not in favor of that idea. Mind you, I knew uh, the owners longer than anybody in the world at that point to this day probably. And so I watched them bring in some people in previous projects very skillfully, very talented, and so on and so forth. So I had a level of confidence. But I remember the other leaders at the time were really, they were pushing back heavily. They were not interested in hearing that somebody from the outside was going to come in and get involved in training us. They wanted that to come from within. And I said, look at guys, I've watched Wayne and his partners yeah. do this in the past. I said, let's just give them a chance. My guess is they probably have selected a pretty talented guy. Well, little did we know. I just talked to Mark about this the other day at the last event. No, it was at a private event somewhere we were, in a ranch, I think, in, <laughs> oh, in Kansas. And um, I said, you know, when you came in, I knew what the atmosphere was. But as he began to speak and as he began to go through his tremendous skill set, everybody began to realize how – talented he was and literally he's had a dramatic impact on what's happened with world ventures these years the integral part of everything wayne often calls it our training manufacturing system that we have and it really came about because of mark's incredible skill set and his ability to be able to bring other people along train them and so on who now creating this production line of, of trainers now around the world. It's been pretty impressive. The most significant I've seen in the 40 years I've been in the industry. Wow. Um, Fadia, maybe from a, from a mom's point of view, can you share with the women listening to this call, you know, all these years of being a mother, right? Uh, you know, bringing up your daughter now, 28 years old. Um, why, why is it so important if, if you're a woman right, to, to come and attend training events, even though you're so busy with your family and your commitments at home? 
um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, ah, I can't think of the word. I'm, hey, you know, Dennis, uh, uh, you know, Dennis, uh, Fatty is also a foreigner. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so, okay. so we, <laughs> this is yeah. our third language, by the way, in case everybody's and, wondering where this comes I, from. I lost the word I'm looking for, like a motivational, in, 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 it's like self-motivation for me to go to these training. I mean, I find myself, I grew up so much by attending these meetings. Um, the first time I went and Dwight said, I'm like, 149, oh no, we can't afford, we don't want to spend that much money. We've already been to the one before. Well, now, every time somebody asks me, you're going to go again? Didn't you go to the last one? Don't these training get boring? I'm like, are you kidding me? I buy a brand new wardrobe every time I go to the training. I'm so excited about the training. And yes, these trainings have changed my life and my thinking um, of, of the training. Yes. Yeah, I would say absolutely that is the case. And um, uh, the thing about the training is that We've been to every single training, uh, Dennis, it's in 13 and a half, we're 13 years and seven months this month, and we've been to every single training that's been in America uh, since then. In, in Texas, we call that a clue. In other words, if you want to win, <laughs> if you want that's a clue. Yes. You know, if this business, if you want this business to impact your life, you must attend training. I was thinking about it earlier this morning, thinking here in Dallas, uh, we have the famous Dallas Cowboys. It's one of the most uh, highest profile franchises in sports history and in the world. Uh, and certainly up there within some of the world soccer teams and so on, they're pretty phenomenal as well. Ironically, boot camp that we're essentially talking about today is going to be held at a place called the Star. And the Star is the famous uh, icon for the Dallas Cowboys. And they have a fabulous facility in Plano, Frisco, Texas. And... Um, Everybody that's going to attend here in the United States is going to experience this location, which is absolutely phenomenal location. But um, that 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 uh, that where I was going to go with that is that this is a a destination that is by itself significant, and let alone uh, the information that we're going to experience since there one more time after dozens and dozens of times. It's going to be impressive. Wow, I bet it's going to be a huge, uh, epic event, the star, huh? Wow, awesome. Um, so uh, here's, here's one last question, right, for, for the both of you. Um, and it's regarding, you know, uh, what happened uh, the, in, in the last uh, 12, 18 months where the company went through, you know, some challenges up and down financially, uh, internally, you know, even uh, in the field. Uh, so... Uh, that it has been almost a year um, uh, now coming uh, and we're entering the boot camp season. So I just want to hear from you guys, you know, what do you see, right, um, for this company, you know, for, for, for Wayne and Wool Ventures going forward, you know, af after this boot camp, during and after this boot camp, you know, after we've just uh, almost, you know, uh, survived one of the darkest periods in this company's history. Yeah. Uh, you know, I kind of refer to uh, the depression of 1718. Uh, you know, back in the United States, we had a depression back in the 30s. It's kind of hard to fathom now uh, with significant success economically the last uh, 100, almost 90 plus years. But we experienced the 1718. And uh, I had confidence because of knowing Wayne all along. A lot of people call me, of course, what do you think, what do you think? And so I, I just, uh, you know, having been a pilot, it's kind of a little bit like the sailing ship's um, story. You know, the captain's the last one to leave the ship, right? And so, uh, you know, I basically said, look it, uh, I don't have an absolute crystal ball, but I know all the principles are in place. I know what Wayne's heart is. I know what his tenacity is his strengths are, and uh, a lot of times there's pressures in a large organization, like a lot of things happening around the world that you don't necessarily have absolute control on. So, but it's about the basics. And they had the basics built in as far as I'm concerned. I said, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be the guy that turns out the lights, the last lights, and help padlock the door. 
Until then, I'm all in. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to imagine all the issues and so on. I just want to say we are all in, we're committed, and we're going to do everything we can. And enough people did that to help pull through a very, very tough times. <clears throat> and we're now on the backside of that, and here we go. And you're right, this season now, starting with boot camp, started maybe even a few months ago, a month or two ago in, in Los Angeles with the United event. And uh, that's where we realized that, hey, we're back on track. Let's get rocking and rolling again. We watched this tremendous amount of growth take place since we started, since the beginning. We know what the possibilities are. We know what the potentials are. The industry is gargantuous. We have this unique niche in the industry that nobody else has and been able to do. It'll be extremely hard to ever emulate this exactly. So we have all these pieces going for us. For us. All we have to do is execute on an individual basis and uh, collectively take the whole company back. And like he's been saying, Wayne, you know, two to three billion in two or three years. I'm with him on that. Wow, wow. That's really, um, really, we see, see the vision. Fadia? Yes? And yeah. I was just going to say that every time Dwight and I, which is often at the airport, and obviously you know, and I know, uh, being a flight attendant, the flights are always full. The airport is always full. And Dwight and I look at each other and we say, thank God we're in the travel business. And yeah. thank God we are in the travel business, sir. Exactly. Travel is booming every single day. All right. So uh, one last, last uh, final question before we close. Uh, let's switch over to something more fun. You know, uh, uh, from my point of view, from a lot of people's point of view, when they look at the both of you, you know, you're retired. Um, you, you've been retired the last 13, 14 years of your life. Share with us, you know, what's... Uh, your life like your day-to-day -day life now you know and why it's it's really embodying fun freedom and fulfillment mm -hmm. all the way from the day you started World Ventures until now I'll start that with this little story actually it happened with another guy that's uh, I've been in the business here and in the market named Sean Sturrock he uh, he was talking one time on stage here locally and he's saying, I was able to walk away from my business, and then my wife was able to retire. And he said, so what I do now, I get up with the kids, and I make coffee, and I bring the coffee and bring it in to my wife. And I said, well, thank you very much, Sean. Thank you very much. Now I've got it. Now the bar has been raised one more time. So I said, okay. So I started to, you know, do that, make breakfast. I mean, excuse me, not breakfast. Not, I don't go that far. No. <laughs> I, I, I make coffee. I bring it in to Fatty, who's usually sleeping longer, and when she's ready, and then give her the coffee. So then the second time he was on stage, he said, not only do I make coffee, but I fluff her pillow. I said, oh, Lord, here we go again. Now the bar is a little higher. So now I have to bring the coffee in and fluff her pillow, say good morning, and give her a kiss. And that's and about so my time. And so that's how we start the morning at 9-ish, 9.30, quarter to 10, generally. That's to start the, what I would call the, Make a living, living. Wow! I wish, uh, I wish all of us, you know, can uh, grow up and retire like the both of you, <laughs> and have a great life. Yeah. So it's not too late, uh, guys. Right? If you know you're, you're, you know, uh, just uh, uh, in your, you know, forties, fifties, sixties, you know, thinking about retirement, have uh, maybe even still struggling through life. Uh, Dwight and Fadia, they're leading the life of our dreams. Uh, you know, as a uh, financially retired uh, couple, right? So we're really happy, very, uh, very um, thankful to have you on this call. Uh, both of you, Dwight and Fadia, thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. You're very welcome. Sorry. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We'll see you yeah. all at boot camp around the world. We'll yeah. see you in Cabo. Yeah, Los Cabos, Mexico. Everyone on the call, please just fill in the Facebook comments with your love, hugs. Uh, you know, flowers and kisses for this lovely couple and on the YouTube, right? If you're watching this on YouTube. All right. So Dwight, Fadia, I hope to see you in uh, Los Cabos, Mexico soon during the RMD incentive trip. It's really nice hearing from you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. See you at the top. We'll see you on the beaches of the world. Yes. See you at the top.